Welcome to Capsule RN, where nursing school just got easier. Meet Anna, a 94-year-old woman who has come to the emergency room for difficulty breathing, a temperature of 101.4 Fahrenheit, and a productive cough. Based on what the nurse already knows about Anna, what will she likely chart in regards to Anna's breathing? Is it A, apnea, B, dyspnea, C, sleep apnea, or D, bradypnea? Before we can answer this question, we first need to know, what is respirations? Respirations is the vital sign that measures three things, breathing rate, rhythm, and depth. Let's talk about each of these. First is breathing rate. Breathing rate measures how many breaths the patient takes in one minute. One breath equals one rise and fall of the chest. A normal adult will breathe 12 to 20 times every minute. If the adult is breathing less than 12 breaths every minute, we call that bradypnea. If the adult is breathing more than 20 breaths every minute, we call that tachypnea. Next is breathing rhythm. And this has to do with just that, the rhythm of the breathing. Rhythm can be either regular or irregular. A regular rhythm means the pause between each breath is the same length, whereas an irregular rhythm means the interval between each breath is not the same and varies in length. If the rhythm is regular, you can count respirations for 30 seconds and multiply by two. If the breathing is irregular, make sure you count for a full minute. Lastly, there is breathing depth, which measures how much the diaphragm and chest cavity expand with each breath. A normal depth will cause the diaphragm and chest cavity to expand only gently with an appropriate amount of air each breath. An abnormal depth will cause the chest cavity to either barely expand with air movement, this is often termed shallow breathing, or on the other hand to excessively expand with air movement, this is often termed deep breathing. There are two other key respiratory terms you need to know that are not normal findings. The first is apnea. This is a period of not breathing. You may have heard this term connected with the condition called sleep apnea. During sleep apnea, a patient who is sleeping will have periods when they stop breathing and then start back again. The second term is dyspnea. Dyspnea is a shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. If your patient is struggling and laboring for each breath, they have dyspnea. There are five factors that can increase or decrease respirations that you should make sure you know as a nurse. Let's talk about each of these. First is anxiety. Anxiety activates stress hormones that are part of the fight or flight response, which causes physiological changes in the body, one of which is increased breathing. Second is acute pain. Acute pain is a signal that tells the body that something is wrong and will often activate that stress response in which the body reacts with an increased heart rate, an increased blood pressure, and an increased respiratory rate. Third, there are lung issues and we're talking about things like pneumonia, COPD, and asthma. Lung issues can lead to decreased oxygen or increased carbon dioxide levels in the blood. The body activates faster breathing in an attempt to correct these unhealthy levels. Fourth is neurological injury. The brainstem is at the bottom of the brain and connects the brain to the spinal cord. The brainstem controls breathing. If there is a neurological injury and the brainstem is affected, it can start sending faulty messages to the lungs to involuntarily breathe faster or slower than it really should. And fifth, there's opioid overdose. Too much opioid pain medication can suppress the brain so it can't send out its typical messages to the lungs to breathe as often. Because of the oversedation, the respiratory rate for adults will decrease to less than 12. It's incredibly important for nurses to assess their patients' respirations before giving a patient ordered pain medication to make sure it is safe to do so. Let's talk about what you need to do if you notice your patient's respirations are abnormal for any reason. You get a full set of vital signs, especially the pulse oxygen level. Apply oxygen if it's appropriate to do so. Notify the proper healthcare team members, such as the doctor, respiratory therapist, and rapid response team, as is appropriate. And lastly, you'll want to give a nebulizer treatment if the doctor orders that. A nebulizer treatment takes a liquid lung medication, turns it into mist, and the patient inhales it through a mask. A nebulizer is often ordered for breathing difficulties to help with wheezing, coughing, and shortness of breath. There's one final fact you need to know. Patients who are in pain after an injury like a broken rib or any type of surgery may have shallow breathing. To help with this, the doctor will often order an incentive spirometer. 
An incentive spirometer is a handheld device that helps the patient take deeper breaths, keeping the lungs free of fluid, and helping prevent pneumonia, which is a common complication after surgery. Remember Anna? Based on what the nurse already knows about Anna, what will she likely chart in regards to Anna's breathing? Is it A, apnea, B, dyspnea, C, sleep apnea, or D, bradypnea? If you said B, dyspnea, you are correct. Dyspnea is shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. Thanks for being part of the Capsule RN community. If this video added value to your studies, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. We are excited about releasing more and more content in our continued pursuit of making nursing school easier.